If you wanna update your wardrobe affordably, stay tuned. I'm gonna show you how updating the essentials in your wardrobe can make everything you wear look better. Hi, this is Netta, welcome to my channel. My whole goal for this channel is to help you build a wardrobe and a style that you love so you look beautiful and feel confident every single day. So I have been talking about essentials for a long time on this channel. And recently, a couple nights ago actually, I did a closet edit for a beautiful new client. And one of the things that jumped out at me as it often does in closet edits is the need for her to update her basic and essential pieces. So if the essential pieces, the basic pieces, the simplest pieces in your wardrobe are older, definitely over 10 years old or five, five, even five years old, you're going to find that it, they, they can pull your wardrobe down a little bit in terms of how modern, how fresh, how updated your wardrobe appears to be. So I did a, a video a couple of months ago on elevated essentials where I talked about elevating your essentials by choosing fabrics and cuts and quality that is a step above what your what your current essentials are. But today we're going to talk about updated essentials. And really we're talking about those basic pieces that everybody talks about, right? The tank top and the t-shirt and the basic black or dark neutral pants. We're talking about those pieces, but we're talking about how with just a few substitutions in your wardrobe, you can really take the most basic and the most casual outfits, make them more contemporary, more modern, and therefore more stylish, and therefore less frumpy just by updating the details of those pieces and buying more contemporary versions of those pieces. So I'm excited about this topic because I think this is something everybody struggles with because we, we're all wearing um, some of those essential pieces. I mean, you might not be a t-shirt person, you might not be a tank top person, but you're going to have a couple of these essentials in your wardrobe that if you took them to the next level in terms of modernizing them, then your your entire wardrobe would change and shift and be more contemporary and be more, more stylish. So um, these are easy tweaks to make that can really make a big difference in your wardrobe. And they also tend to be really, really affordable. So the first thing I want to talk about is the tank top. Now, I know some of you love tank tops and wear them all, all the time. Others don't want to show your arms, don't want to wear a tank top, don't like anything that fitted for whatever reason. But um, tank tops have changed over the last few years and definitely changed in the last season or two. And so I want to talk about what a contemporary tank top looks like right now. So uh, for years when I would you know, work on a client's um, closet and they had a very statement skirt or statement pair of pants and they didn't have anything to wear with it, I'd say, just put a white tank top and a denim jacket with it and you're good. That still works, but the white tank top and the denim jacket have been tweaked a little, right? So the current white tank top, we're going away from that wife beater, horrible name, but wife beater tank, um, the ribbed scoop neck sleeveless tank top. And we're going for a little bit more of an elevated and a little more modern version of that tank. And that is a higher neck tank with the, with the cutaway arm. So it's almost like a little bit of a halter style tank, um, higher neck. I really like these from easy standard. Um, they are, I think they're just beautiful and very, um, versatile. These work in the exact same way that your former scoop neck ribbed tank did, but they just look a little bit more modern. And that's the point of all of these, these substitutions. They fill the same role, they check the same box in your wardrobe, but they're more elevated and they're more modern. So these easy standard tanks, they come in a three pack for, I think it's $108, but you can find a variation on this tank and on most of these pieces, anywhere you shop from Target and H&M and Walmart to, um, you know, Neiman Marcus. Like I say, any, any price range, you'll be able to find basics. And that's the beauty of basics and beauty of essentials is you can really find a modern and a, and a cool looking version at whatever you want to spend for it. I just happened to like this, this trio from Easy Standard and I thought that was a decent price for them. Actually, as I shoot this video, it's on sale, those three tanks for $81. So that makes it a little bit more affordable even. So instead of 
the scoop neck ribbed tank try a higher neck kind of halter style tank they call this the it's it's a racer tank according to easy standard a rib fitted racer tank okay let's move on to the next category and that's a t-shirt so i'm still seeing in stores and online and definitely um in clients wardrobes i'm seeing a couple of types of t-shirts that i would say you might want to put on the back burner for now one is the really thin knit almost see-through like the very very fine drapey thin knit jersey t-shirts that we were seeing a few years ago they are very clingy they are very unforgiving they show show everything they show the outline of your bra if they're lighter colored um, but even if they're darker color that fabric is clingy and unforgiving uh, these are generally a little bit longer which is also something that makes them a little bit more dated and they come in like I said in that very fine jersey knit sometimes they're silkyish knit fabric um, those are both kind of out of style and a little bit dated right now another t-shirt style that's a little bit dated is a slub knit we're not seeing as many of the slub knits um, you want a, a clean crisp slightly thicker and slightly chunkier or boxier tee silhouette um, you know my favorite i talk about it all the time it's the semi crop noble tee from mott and bow it's not cropped like you're not going to see your belly it's just hits at the waist which is a really nice so you can tuck it in if you want you don't have to tuck it in if you don't want to but um, this is a a more substantial tee it's a little bit of a thicker knit and it's a lot more flattering and a lot more forgiving as well as being more modern so Again, you can find these at every price point, but you want a thicker, more substantial tee. You don't want a clinky jersey material. You don't want something sl slinky feeling, and you don't want a slub knit in your tee. So updating your tee can make all the difference in the world. Okay, so let's move on to denim. Now, I we get so many questions about skinny jeans so many questions about skinny jeans can you still wear skinny jeans yes you can still wear skinny jeans my suggestion is to not wear really ridiculously skinny skin tight jeans so definitely i've said this in previous videos it bears repeating jeggings are out i will say jeggings were almost never in because jeggings are um just they're not elegant and they're not flattering on anybody they're just not they're not cute they're just not cute so the jeggings that literally look like leggings with a with a denim pattern or denim details on them that don't have a button and zipper closure those are definitely something you should shelve but we are seeing the return of high boots this season right riding boots knee high boots all of those boots can you wear your skinny jeans with them absolutely i think skinny jeans are probably the best option for those boots but um my suggestion if you want a modern look for a skinny jean is to go a little bit less of a skinny skinny like a little bit less stretch in the denim so i really like these page high rise sarah slim jeans so maybe slim over skinny if you have skinnies wear your skinnies with that with those boots perfect but if you want to wear it without the boots and you want it to look a little bit more updated i would say go for a slim it will give you the same um, effect that you had with the skinny while looking a lot more contemporary and in my opinion also being a lot more flattering to a wide variety of body types skinnies were not that flattering on many women slim and straight is a lot more flattering now this season we've got all the flowy denim we've got like puddle denim and long denim and baggy denim that's going to be harder to wear i'm going to do a separate denim video but the slim or the straight one or a boot cut flare style that is those are the three silhouettes that are going to be the easiest for those of us over 40 over 50 who don't look like supermodels um to wear so look for a slim a straight a boot cut or flare or bell bottom style those are going to be great for a variety of body types i've done videos on pants by body type pants style by body type and those are going to be flattering they're going to be a lot easier to wear um the baggy baggy denim all of that just look for my future video on jeans but in the meantime place your jeggings with a regular slim or a slightly skinny jean instead okay let's look at blazers well, blazers have done a major shift like everything has done a major shift in the last couple of years so um blazers used to be you know fitted at the waist hit like right 
at the lower part of your waist or higher part of your hip. Um, we saw a lot of those scrunch sleeve blazers and they, they, they just were, they were just worn snug to the body and hitting in that middle length. Those blazers are unfortunately no longer in style. Many of us have them. And if you're wearing a classic suit, you might want to continue wearing the classic blazer with the classic suit. That is fine. But as a fashion blazer for a fashion look, uh, the more modern blazers there are two versions of them. Now, one is a longer boyfriend style blazer. I still prefer these longer boyfriend style blazers with some waist definition. It can be hard unless you're very tall and slim to wear these longer boyfriend style blazers with something undefined um, or with you know a straight long boyfriend blazer. It can be very hard to pull off after a certain age so um, or under a certain height. So I think uh, if you're going to go for a longer style look for one with a little bit of waist definition in it or as i've mentioned in the past make sure that the outfit that you're wearing underneath the long blazer is defined at the waist that's going to make it a lot more flattering wearing baggy over baggy long over long is going to be really hard to pull off um, but the other option for those of you who don't want to do the longer blazer is a crop blazer i love this one from legence um, it's the inez crop blazer um, this is a more premium blazer but it's so beautiful and you can find a version of a cropped blazer this is very petite friendly very friendly for those of us who are a little bit short -weight. Wasted, um, and it's just a really fun new look. This is a great way to add definition to something that you're wearing that might be a little flowy or a little boxy. Um, adding a little crop blazer like that over the top can just add a little bit of shape to the outfit. So go long or go short for the blazer, but that in-between fitted blazer with the ruched sleeves is out for now. Okay, Let's move on to ballet flats. Ballet flats are having a moment again. I used to wear ballet flats like crazy, and then I kind of got away from them because the styles got away from them. And often when I picture ballet flats, I picture it'll look like this. Now this is not a cute look. This is like, I, I don't know how to describe it, but for a while everybody had these round toe, shapeless, very frumpy ballet flats that were almost always in black, they, they got beat up easily, they, ha they gave a very frumpy line to the foot, they um, made everything that you wore them with look a little sloppy, they, just not, they were just not a cute look on anybody. So the very basic um, flat leather or faux leather, round toe, um, often with almost no sole, and so they look like you're flat-footed in them. Those just, they make everybody's look, feet look wider, um, bigger, like I said, sloppier. Can I go on and on? I just cannot stand that look. Fortunately, now we are seeing updated, elegant ballet flats. Now, when you're looking for a ballet flat, if you want a really good quality ballet flat, look for one with an actual sole that is that you can see when you look on the side. You don't want it like you know a, a rubber sole that's melted into the shoe and, and there's no definition. So I'm going to show you um, the Natalie Sling from um, Sarah Flint. You know I'm a Sarah Flint brand ambassador. I'll pop my um, code up here if you want to check that out. It's uh, it will give you fifty dollars off if you use. The the link that I have in the description box below. These are premium ones. This is a slingback ballet flat. These are really, really comfortable and a really good choice if you've got narrow feet. Um, but this is the Natalie Sling. Notice that you can see a definite sole at the bottom and just the tiniest little bit of a heel. Um, that is going to be a much more elegant and elevated look. Um, another one from Sarah Flint that I love that is considered one of their most, most, most comfortable shoes, and you know all the shoes are comfortable, but this one is super comfortable, is the Sachetto Ballet Flat. It's got a cap toe. It's a beautiful, elegant, sleek, classic ballet flat for those of you with more classic style. Now, I have a lot of options in the um, in the catalog that I created for this video, more options for flats, but one of the key trends for flats right now is a Mary Jane flat and also a ballet flat. is a Mary Jane ballet flat and a square toe ballet flat. So I got a couple of pairs to show you that kind of combine both of these trends really well. Um, the Michaela McHale Velvet Mary Jane Flats. These are from J.M. McLaughlin. Um, these are really beautiful, really fun, 
excuse the plain, really beautiful, really fun, um, square toed ballet flat with a Mary Jane style. Um, that it's just a, a cool color. That's just something that if you bring into your wardrobe, they're a little more premium at 268. They're a little bit expensive, but if you bring, bring something like that to your wardrobe, your whole, um, all of your outfits for fall will be cuter because of those shoes. Um, I also like these from Shein. They're $36, the square toe sling back ballet flats. These are really, really cute. So not as much of a classic ballet as like the Sachetto, but this is kind of a modern take on a ballet flat that's in style this season. Um, I love these from these pointed toe ballet flats from Ballarette. Now, Ballarette is a classic. Now, th there are a lot of brands that do classic ballet flats. Pretty Ballerinas does them. Repetto does them. But this is from Ballarette, and this is their, um, it's kind of a two-tone flat. It's the, it just says pointed toe ballet flats in black suede and white leather. I just think those are so fun. So pointed toe, square toe, Mary Jane styling, maybe a cap toe, definite sole. You want to elevate and update your ballet flats. So the, the ballet flats of this season do not look exactly like the ballet flats from 10 years ago. Okay, let's talk about boots and updating your boots. I've talked about boots a lot over the last couple of months because you know, it's fall and it's all about boots, but there are so many boots in style this season, but this is not one of them. These like, look at, this is a model. Look at how short and stocky her legs look in these boots. They are not cute. And this is the boot that everybody, everybody, everybody was wearing five, 10 years ago. So if you still have these taupe or light brown, round toe, chunky, clunky, unflattering boots, booties in your wardrobe, this is, this is a, this is your cue to retire those. Um, here's another view of them. If you've got this you know, everybody had this boot five or 10 years ago. Everybody had this boot and it was in all the Pinterest photos. This boot is just not in style anymore. So let's talk about updating that boot. I think that either a square toe, if you want more wiggle room for your toes and more comfort or a round toe option, that's a little bit sleeker where it comes up, it, it can, it can come up a little bit higher on your ankle to, to elongate your ankle a little. And, um, in a sleeker finish is going to be the way to go. So I've got a couple of options here. The Mark Fisher um, Ulani pointed toe high heel booties. These are really nice. Um, they're affordable. They are um, a great alternative if you're looking for, oh my gosh, if she just told me to throw out my neutral boots and now I don't have any neutral boots. This is the updated version of that neutral boot. There's another pair here that's got a, a square toe um, in an in a off-white like bone color. That's a really cool updated boot. You can do a Chelsea boot. It's always in style and very, very comfortable because they tend to be flat. Um, I like a, like a lug sole boot. That's a really cool update on boots for the fall. Um, they're fun. They're really, really comfortable. Um, and they come in, all of these boots come in that same ubiquitous beige color that we were all wearing. But look for a square toe, look for a pointy toe, look for um, a little bit more of an elevated finish and or a lug sole and um, just update those boots for uh, for fall. I think that's so important because you're going to be wearing them with everything, right? Okay, the final thing I want to talk about is a few years ago when I would take clients shopping, one of the things that was on pretty much my, my wish list for every client was a pair of dark ponte knit pants. I think I mentioned them in videos, like a stretchy ponte knit pant, um, Calvin Klein used to make really good versions of them. I'd always go upstairs in Dillard's. We'd always get a pair of ponte knit pants and we would wear them to death. I wore mine to death. And then when I wore them out, I would replace them. I'd wear them out and replace them. Okay, so they are, you know, Spanx has ponte knit pants. Beta brand pants are ponte knit pants. Um, I did a video last year on finding black pants. A couple of those were that stretchy knit, including, like I said, the Beta brand, the Spanx, um, the, um, I know I'm, I'm missing a couple, but there are a couple that are like that stretchy black ponte knit. Instead of those ponte, and you don't have to get rid of these, they're not like out of style, but if you want a more updated version and a more outfit friendly version for fall, um, I definitely recommend going with a trouser pant instead of a stretch knit pant in your dark neutral of choice. So um, instead of like those Spanx pull-on stretch pants, instead of the beta brand stretch pull-on 
pants. Go for a pant that is a little bit more tailored, not made of a stretchy material, and in a woven either a silk or um, a wool crepe or you know a, just a seasonless wool, um, a cotton blend but you want you want a pant with a little bit more drape you want it to be you know a traditional zipper and button and waistband maybe a little bit of of pleats in the front maybe not depending on how you feel about that detail how flattering it is for you um but you know my favorites are currently are the comfort fit silk cigarette pants from lily silk i will pop my coat up here i love these pants i want to wear them every single day they come in black and navy hoping they'll come out with more colors but um those are just a really nice silk. They're washable. Um, they're really comfortable. They're light, um, and, and they just feel beautiful on. But there are a lot of of trouser pants that are really really flattering in stores right now. Um, the pair that I showed in my Antonio Mal Milani um, the Antonio Milani pair that I showed in one of my fall try on haul videos i'll link those below too those are a great pair of trouser pants pay attention to the inseam length because it's ideal if these hit you at like right around the ankle bone is a good place uh, for these pants to hit then you can wear them with different shoe heights and they just become a really versatile backbone um, piece of your wardrobe and that's what all of these are designed to be these are all essentials for a reason so a tee ballet flats boots a pair of dark neutral pants jeans all of these things are the staple pieces of your wardrobe we want to make them as fabulous as possible and as updated as possible and like i said with just a small investment it doesn't take a lot to update your tees and takes you can have completely elevated and updated and more interesting and more stylish outfits so i hope that you like this video um, if you want to see more ways to update your wardrobe affordably let me know hit the like button tell me what you think of this video in the comments and don't forget if you haven't subscribed definitely subscribe also if you don't know i do have an ageless style program it is opening up um, very soon but it's ongoing it's something that you can participate in at your own pace it doesn't start or end at a specific time so you can hop in whenever you want and really start working on your your wardrobe and your style with my support and with the support of really the best community uh, of, of women over 40 who are all working to improve their style we just have the, the happiest most supportive and loveliest people in our community and I'd love for you to join us so check out the little clip at the end of this video for that love you guys and I'll see you in the next video bye Hi, this is Netta and I'm so excited to tell you about my Ageless Style program. As of this date, over a thousand women have explored their personal style, figured out what works for their bodies, and become confident in their style over 40 using my Ageless Style program. It is the only program of its kind in the industry and I'm so proud of it. It includes community, accountability, and plenty of support from me in the form of body type analysis, color analysis, all of the things. Everything that you need to get your style to the confident and relaxed and effortless place that you want it to be over 40 is included in the Ageless Style program.